it's coming back. It's coming back for all the right reasons because you can have vinyl and put it on your turntable and play it and get a sound that you can't get from CDs. But more importantly than that, is that you become a participant in the activity. From what uh, I've seen with my customers is, is that it's much more of uh, the, the ritual around it. Um, it's much more uh, the entertainment and shopping for it rather than just being online and clicking a button. You know, going to the store with your friends before or after a movie or dinner, uh, that becomes a part of the process and the browsing around rather than just being on a website browsing around. To really experience the album. It's about holding it it's, and putting it on to, to listen to. And there's also that fun aspect of going into a record store and seeing these used records and thinking well I've never heard this before and then you listen to it on a turntable and you think yeah this is great you rediscover these artists that were good enough to be pressed but they've just been forgotten about so that's I think that's what it is really it's it's this lack of, of physicality in, in, a, in a digital world. And it's not just about the song it's yeah. about the experience it's about buying the vinyl opening it up you know, putting it on the turntable, sitting back and just enjoying the music. To be able to pick up something and hold it in your hand and smell it and physically handle it and go through all the rituals of putting it on a turntable, putting the needle down and then stepping back and listening and then 22 minutes later going back to the turntable and turning it over and starting again. It's also tactile. It's something that you can hold and you can open it up if it's a, if it's a gatefold and um, so it's got that. Uh, and then, you know, you, you, you put it on and there's an oral uh, experience uh, as well, um, a higher quality sound. You take the vinyl out, you read the cover, it's got a great picture, and you participate in the, in the process. It is fun uh, and entertaining in and of itself, as well as then getting it home and the ritual of putting the vinyl on and listening to it. Uh, you know, I liken it to somebody that's a, a wine aficionado and, you know, the opening of the cork, you know, the smelling of the wine, the looking at it, tasting it, appreciating it is, is, is a ritual. It really calms you, it brings you into the moment and it makes you much more interactive with the music. And you can have your beer in your hand or your glass of wine or your scotch and sit back in your chair and, and really listen to music the way music should be. different world from uh, just a generation ago um, and if you sort of just think back a scant 20 years uh, the dominant um, method for people to consume music would have been CDs uh, and um, there would have been a little bit of vinyl and a little bit of cassette um, in fact I think people uh, generally forget how long uh, those two formats survived. The very first album I remember buying was at Robinson's. I paid $4.99 for a copy of Elton John's Greatest Hits. And my mother was absolutely mortified that I would spend that much money on such a piece of trash. The very first album I bought, I got my first job when I was 10 and I was shining shoes in a hair salon that my brother worked at in Jackson Square in Hamilton. And the first record I bought was They Only Come Out at Night by the Edgar Winter Group. My first experience, this is, this is, this is how much I go back in history. Uh, I would buy my records, my vinyl records from the drugstore. So I, I bought Are You Experience? And I remember putting it on my Seabreeze at home and I was playing it to all my friends over the phone. That's, that's what I used to do. And I used to, I, I got neck problems from putting the phone up against the side of my head and playing songs to them over the phone. When I started learning guitar, playing songs over the phone and going, you know, holding it up, up to the phone here, or I'd prop it up on something and it'd fall down and play songs. But I used to hold the, the phone up to the sea breeze and play these vinyl records for them.
I came of age musically in the 70s. So we had two choices back then. You had the 12-inch LP and the 7-inch single. And that's where you got your music from. You, you heard about it on the radio, then you went to the store and you bought it. I remember standing in front of a record store, waiting for Queen um, News of the World to come out, and then going to see the band that night, and not even heard the record yet, and going to Toronto to see them. We would line up for the records, because you knew Tuesday the new records were coming. And when I was a kid, it was Deep Purple one week, Led Zeppelin the next week, you know, like just countless bands, David Bowie, Paul McCartney, Queen, just kept coming. I remember going on a Saturday, basically spending the entire day going through record stores and just checking out bands that I knew, bands that I didn't know, this one's cool, that one's cool. You'd get to know the guy that was working behind the cash and you'd talk about, you know, Kiss Records or, you know, the new Uriah Heap album that came out. So you, you actually learned about new bands that you never knew. And, and that whole thing, like I say, it was almost like a religion that when you knew you're, there was a Queen album coming out, you're down there, you're at the store on Tuesday, you're waiting for the door to open. As soon as the guy cracks open the case, you got the record, right? It, it, it was priority one. Instead of sitting in front of a TV playing a video game, we went to record stores. Another place we go to was Sam the Record Man. And, uh, you know, I used to explore all the sections. Like they had, a, they had just, a, just an incredible wealth music they had everything you'd want to listen to you know and if you wanted to go down and 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 you know we listened to everything from from you know we got into jazz then but we got in some of the more exploratory bands which would be like you know um, uh, you know a lot of the bands from from the west coast in particular I was into um, you know uh, Grateful Dead a little bit but yeah, Moby Grape and some of those and, and of course uh, uh, then the Steve Miller band came along. Boz Skaggs was in that band. Um, Space Cowboy and all that stuff. So, you know, we just would explore every type of music. A lot of the jazz stuff, you know, Coltrane and, and all that stuff I'd listen to. And got into, you know, bands like Fairport Convention. I mean, the stuff. And vinyl was just something you, that was so tangible, that was so magic, you know. opened up our store in, in May of 1979. At that point in time, Sam the Record Man had well over 100 stores and responsible close to 30% of all the music sold in Canada. So we were a big chain and, and an iconic chain as most people that are over 30 would know. The economy was good, people were making money, everybody was happy and they just kind of filled into that. Physical product was always king, especially in the 80s. Working as a kid that was raised, you know, buying records and uh, seeing our first record out there, and, and it was vinyl. I mean, you know, vinyl was on everyone except the last record, vinyl was still a big entity. And uh, it was cool because, I mean, it was a dream from when I was probably six or seven years old, and then to finally have a record and have it on a major label and have it out worldwide. Then, towards the end of the 70s, we started getting into cassettes because a lot of us either had a Sony Walkman or something like it, or we began to see cassette players in our cars. Some of us bought pre-recorded cassettes, others made mixtapes just for the car or for the Walkman. And uh, so many of us bought pre-recorded cassettes that for a brief time in the early 1980s, the cassette was the biggest selling pre-recorded format of all time. But then, late 82, we have the compact disc, and everything begins to change. It appeared uh, to have been dying uh, a, a, a slow and painful death uh, after the 90s. In, in fact, it almost disappeared as a format. Um, the uh, pressing plants were shutting down everywhere. People stopped producing it. If you go back to the mono in 55, they were arriving at the retail store in, in a very good condition because 50,000 sales of a Nat King Cole or a Frank Sinatra or a Perry Como record or a Presley record, that was big, that was gold. Well, by the time you flash forward to 1975, when you go through two or three improvements in the vinyl, 
and you find that all of a sudden onto after that rock era of the 60s in the 70s sales start to go from 150,000 200,000 to a million I mean the Eagles greatest hits uh, sold a million uh, and the record companies couldn't keep up so what happened is instead of vinyl being 180 it became 160 grams 140 grams 120 grams 80 grams maybe they started to arrive uh, at the store in boxes and you took them out and they were warped badly so there was a return problem with vinyl we were really really tired of vinyl at that point for for a couple of reasons uh, first of all, the oil crisis of the 1970s really impacted the quality of vinyl that we were getting. Uh, we ended up with recycled vinyl with lots of impurities in it. They were easy to, easier to scratch. There was a lot of cracks and popples and just, uh, they were terrible. And we could not wait to get rid of the vinyl record when the CD came along because the quality of the audio from those records that were made from about 1974 forward were terrible. If you were to get a piece of vinyl from 1973 or earlier, it still sounded pretty good. But the new stuff with the recycled vinyl was, was, was awful. So the record companies said, we're discontinuing vinyl. So it wasn't a choice of the consumer. It wasn't a choice of the retailer. It was a choice of the supplier. When the CDs came in, we phased the vinyl out, and then they had stopped making it, so we couldn't get it anymore. We didn't like that they were replacing the album. Um, but we didn't have a choice in it because they decided they weren't going to make albums anymore. And the CDs were really expensive, so we weren't sure how that was going to go. And I believe cassettes were still available at that time. So eventually it caught on and the prices came down and everybody sort of got used to the fact that you couldn't buy albums anymore and you had to do a, go to CDs. When it kind of switched to the 90s when grunge came along. In a lot of ways, you know, Nirvana killed the music industry because it switched a lot of stuff over, the careers were changing, people's attitudes were changing, then you had the invention of the internet and downloading and all this other kind of stuff. So physical product kind of slid down slowly but surely. Everything started to migrate uh, and at first, uh, uh, you know, it was the file sharing sites which were all illegal. Uh, then uh, uh, the iTunes uh, download system fired up uh, and that really dominated uh, the, the picture for a very long time. Vinyl was always a whole different world, you know. Now I think that there's artists who put out a, a track a month, you know, for, out for streaming. Artists make posts on social media, but it's not quite the same as, as vinyl. And now people look at it differently. It's, it's sort of much more disposable, I think, than that vinyl generation. Let's face it, right? Early on, uh, what we were downloading were these 128 kilobit files, which were crap. You were basically, we'd, we'd aspired to putting fans in the studio, right? That's what musicians aspired to give them that sound, that high fidelity, FM, CD, climbing the ladder. And then suddenly, kids are walking around with earbuds listening to AM quality music, tinny, compressed, horrific. And the audio file was underserved. Neil Young famously saying that listening to digital music is like looking at the world through a screen door, all chopped up. The digital sound is, is, is good from a business perspective, but from a perspective of getting the best sound, analog still, to me, is the winner. When the pendulum began to swing back from digital to analog, this would be about 2008, when a number of independent record stores started something called Record Store Day, and they wanted to re rekindle the romance of going to a record store to hang out with like-minded people, to discuss music, to discover music, and just be music nerds together. And around that same time, we begin to see the sale of vinyl tick up. And that tick has continued 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, until today. Everybody was just going out of business left and right all over the place. Um, but we, we found a niche and just continued to grow as I think all the other people started to go out of business. There was still a demand for CDs. Uh, again, vinyl was really 
on its last leg, so very little demand for that at all. So we kind of started to pick up business as everybody else was going out of business, uh, and that sustained us for you know eight years or so, and more than just sustained us, we continued to grow uh, until all of a sudden this resurgence in vinyl happened, which was a, a blessing. Oh, maybe uh, 2008. Eight is really, really when it started to get a push, and all of a sudden, whoa, people are coming in and asking for turntables again, and uh, you know, needles and all of that kind of stuff. All of a sudden, there were articles about vinyl making a bit of a comeback. People uh, were going into and looking for used vinyl, and they were buying used vinyl. And the surprising part about it is that it, it many of those people were the old guys and the middle-aged guys that had vinyl, but a surprisingly number of people were people that were born after vinyl stopped. So why were the young people coming to buy vinyl? Well, why all of a sudden are you watching TV and there's uh, young kids with a turntable that they got? Vinyl didn't go away because the retailer didn't want to sell it or the consumer didn't want to buy it. And that's why it's coming back because I love vinyl and I know there are hundreds and thousands of people out there that love vinyl. I've always been into music because my dad was a musician growing up so you know, he was playing the piano a lot in our house, and uh, I started piano lessons like at age five. Like I listened to a lot of different stuff. Like my friends were really into hip hop music, so uh, early '90s rap music was big for me. And then my dad, you know, would play everything from like Stevie Wonder to Creedence Clearwater Revival to Frank Sinatra. Uh, you know, Bee Gees, classical music. I, I like vinyl. Um, I think people people still have the need to collect. Things and they like having a collection, and a, you know, a library on display. And so, as music has gone so much more digital, uh, you know, it's just stored in your phone or on your computer or a hard drive. There's no way to display it anymore, and people don't really buy or listen to CDs. So, I guess vinyl has sort of become the kind of boutique or hipster route to kind of do that thing. seems, apart from perhaps New York, Toronto's really the, the leader of the vinyl resurgence. It has a very active arts and music scene around it. Uh, plenty of venues for bands to play at, a, a lot of bands here that are up and coming, or people that come here to start a band. So, uh, and, and then we over the years have had a lot of in-store performances of both international, national, and local bands that come in and play, so try and play off and support the local music community very much so. I was really happy to see it come back. I find that the vinyl has a lot of personality. Um, it's warmer sound, you get, you get all kinds of graphics are better, the, all the write-ups on the jacket. If you listen to both side by side, you can tell it's digital, it's not as warm. When I was a kid, Japanese vinyl was the stuff you wanted because it was always heavier cut and it was a heavier record and it sounded good. The vinyl today is, is 180 gram, 200 gram. It's such a much high qual higher quality vinyl than, than you would have ever have seen in the, uh, in, in the earlier days as well. I, I truly think that it is a beautiful sound that you get out of vinyl compared to uh, digital media. When you're listening to something like Led Zeppelin 2 and you're listening to it on a good hi-fi stereo, it's the closest sound that you'll ever get to standing inside the recording studio and listening to the two-inch tape playback. There's a warmth about it that's not there. I mean, it's a bit of a pain in the ass having to turn it over, but there's a warmth in a record that you don't get in a, in a digital format, which is like a CD or a download. And uh, I think that's what's catching on with everybody. In the world of like food, you see like super modern, you know, techniques of cooking, but then also like a lot of restaurants are like old world, you know, pizza ovens and, and old techniques and, and 
you know, as much as we love technology uh, and all the latest and greatest, there's a lot of uh, things that were kind of like perfected a long time ago that we need to hang on to. So I, I, I prefer to listen to records. People want to hold something for their dollar and physical product has kind of climbed back up into that. It's just really changed the way people buy music. Album artwork was always a huge thing. Those record covers, because they were part of what the album was inside, they were connected with it. It really did make a difference for the artwork too. You know, artwork's kind of a second thought now, and and uh, and it's, it's always on a small. I mean, it's still your you know your promo for your whole thing, but there was something about those albums that were so great. You had more space, so you didn't have to cram it into this little area where you had you know three by three or four by four, whatever it is. You had, and I remember when as a kid, I would buy records just on the jacket. Like bands that I didn't even know, but I'd see the album and go, this is really cool, and take it home and check it out. People are buying the albums and they're being able to listen to it from start to finish and, and see what the artists were trying to get at, because a lot of times, one track flows into another. There's a story there, and there's a reason there's four sides to the record. It's all part of the whole story that you follow through with. And it's the same with every band. You don't just throw songs together and say, there's a record. There's a plot behind it all, and it all tells a story till the end. And I think with the fact that the record is back, people are thinking about making records, not just songs. Musical parents. I had three sib siblings as well, so you had kind of an, an age thing where my oldest brother Robbie, you know, he'd bring in the Cream and the Hendrix and the um, Carlos Santana, and then my mom and dad would bring in the staple singers as far as what they listened to. Odetta, um, you know, Pete Seeger, that kind of thing as well, lots of folk, um, even bluegrass and stuff like that. Uh, Supremes, you know, all that kind of thing. There's music on all the time on the stereo. So I grew up with like just always a stereo on it seems. Even during dinners, you know, like that kind of thing. I talked to a lot of guys who deal in used records and record shows and the thing that they're looking for when they come to buying collections is they want Fleetwood Mac Rumors. They want Endless Summer by the Beach Boys. They want Led Zeppelin IV. They want Sticky Fingers by the Rolling Stones. Well, who wants these records? And they go, kids. The kids want these classic records. They're not necessarily interested in the really expensive collectible things. They want the classic albums from the 70s and 80s and whenever else. I can't tell you how happy it made me to buy my daughter a turntable. You know, Billie Holiday's huge in her list, so is uh, John Coltrane and Miles Davis and all that, so love that. If it's a good song, if it's a good band, if it's a good album, they'll buy it. The young people are buying vinyl a lot. You can't sell them a CD, but you can sell them a vinyl, which is great. And I think a lot of it is um, their parents, what their parent grew up with their parents, and I think it's just a new experience for them. It used to be the kids coming in by themselves, now they're actually coming in with their parents because they have this bond now. The parents remember vinyl, the kids are into it, and it's like this connection that they've made again. But it's not just uh, the boomers uh, who, who are dusting off turntables, it's their kids. And there's a whole segment of the population of youth who are voting with their pocketbooks, I prefer vinyl. I'm not like those people who listen uh, to tinny earbuds. I prefer high quality. Kids get into it, and then the parents start thinking, well, well, Sally's getting into records again, and she's asking for my collection. Well, maybe I'll start listening to it again. So they start getting into it, and it kind of creates this very interesting intergenerational bonding experience. Like, I've probably never been closer with my dad and brother be than now because we're able to discuss records and talk about what the odd labels are and talk about who the odd artists are and kind of bond over the music. There are people who buy vinyl who do not have turntables. The vinyl is often sold with a download certificate or a, a, a code, a, a Spotify code or something, so you're going to get your digital anyway, but you're also going to get a collector's item. You're also going to get uh, uh, you know, the artwork the liner notes, the lyric, and it's all in one place. And it, it actually is a terrific experience. Most of these people weren't even alive when we made vinyl records, and it's just really cool to them. Like even young bands now that are going to the labels, they don't care if they're on CD, they want vinyl. 
Are we putting our record out and are we putting a download card in there? This past year we sold just an amazing amount of turntables. So people are still, and, and that's just the beginning of their journey, if you will, in vinyl. So there's plenty, plenty of people that are still just getting into it. So there's a long curve until it's going to plateau or even die for sure. Music has actually never been more valuable, never been more popular. It has never been consumed to the level that it's being consumed by people today in the world. When you walk along the streets here, or in Japan, or in London, everybody has earphones on. More people listen to music than ever before in the history of it, but how are they listening to it? The problem is that that money is not finding it onto our side of the ledger. It's not ending up in the hands of record companies, agents, managers, promoters, uh, record company, anybody, it, or, or most importantly creators, it's staying on, on, on another side. And so very clearly that's a problem and, and that needs to be addressed. Vinyl's going to survive, but you got to remember it's just a really small niche market. You know, they don't have the ability to produce them very quickly, still don't, the nature of it. But you can always have a very strong dedicated following for that. Because a lot of the old stuff they're just now like all the Pink Floyds are now just coming back on new vinyl. It's taken a long time. The problem is we're bringing it in, we're selling it out in a couple of days, and then we're waiting months to get it put back into the system. It would take six months for us to get replenishment of stock. Vinyl has experienced this upward trend for years now. It's a very high quality uh, product, great sound, and it has liner notes, it has all the things that people used to like. Having these people rediscover why it's such a fun medium in the first place is awesome. All the rest of the music is throwaway stuff. You listen to it and you throw it away. But this you put into your collection, and you go back, and you touch it, and you change its rotation. Music is something that you like to have and play at particular times to match your mood and circumstance. And the best thing for that is vinyl. The digital is just kind of a, a background, whereas we're able to hold a record and say, oh, this record's really rare, or this artist's really good, or... You know, this is uh, this is one that you have to listen to, or we'll listen to it together. It's not just the music. You know, when you click and play it at home, or you put that turntable, you put the record on the turntable. It's everything leading up to it. You know, and and a part of that is the discovery. And so people will come in looking for a specific record, but then walk out with three or four others that they never would have even thought about. And that that thrill of the hunt and the discovery of new music. Vinyl is incredibly inconvenient. It requires the this, this special equipment, it, you can't move it around, you have to listen to it while standing still, uh, it takes up a lot of space, you have to be careful with the product itself lest you, you know, scratch it or damage it in uh, some other way. And for a lot of people it's like, see how much I like music? I like music so much that I'm willing to put up with all this inconvenience because it's worth it. It's kind of being a captive audience, it's like when you go to to the movies now, like you can watch a movie at home on a streaming or, or, or you know, DVD or whatever, but you'll sit there and you'll pick up your phone or you're talking, you'll be distracted or you're clean or you go on your laptop. If you go to a movie, you sit there, you turn your phone off and you just w absorb the movie and it's a very nice experience. And I think records are like that too. If you throw a record on, you're kind of forced to listen to the whole side and uh, there's a lot of sort of nice, you know, accidental discoveries that come from that. You know, you're not just listening to the single. You might hear something you just, you never expected to hear. And uh, I think that's kind of nice, you know, it's nice to slow things down and, and, and enjoy them. There's a place for music that you buy from iTunes. And there's a place for music that you get on CDs. And there's a place for vinyl. To me, the place for vinyl is, is pretty special. Music uh, is something that is very personal, and I think vinyl makes it that way. <laughs>